The New York Times says Trump gets chance to influence American life for generations through Supreme Court pick. President Trump's time in office has been tumultuous, his term dogged by the special counsel investigation, his major legislation achievements few, and his political prospects clouded by the chances of a Democratic Party midterm wave. But no matter what else happens in the Trump presidency, the retirement of Justice Anthony M. Kennedy, the Supreme Court's swing voter, set up Mr. Trump to cement a lasting legacy, given a second Supreme Court vacancy to fill. He appears likely he appears likely to go down in American history as an unusually influential president. As the first Republican president to get his judicial nominees confirmed by a simple majority vote, thanks to the abolition of the Senate filibuster rule, Mr. Trump has already broken records in appointing young and highly conservative appellate judges. Now Mr. Trump can create a new majority block on the Supreme Court, one that is far more consistently conservative, and one that can oppose its influence over American life long after his presidency ends on issues as diverse as the environment and labor or abortion and civil rights. If Mr. Trump secures that prospect, he will fulfill the deal that he struck during the 2016 campaign with traditional and movement conservatives who were skeptical of his politics and hesitant about supporting his candidacy. They feared he would pick an Indianisocratic nominee like a celebrity lawyer he saw on television, rather than an authentic conservative. So as many of you have heard, Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy has been officially retired from the Supreme Court, and liberals everywhere have been losing their minds. But first, I want to talk about this article. In the beginning of this article, it states that President Trump's time in office has not been very good. His term dogged by the special counsel investigation, his major legislative achievements are few, and his political prospects clouded by the chances of a Democratic Party midterm wave. Now this article again is coming from the New York Times, and they must be absolutely delusional over there at that point. To say that President Trump's political achievements are few, that must mean, you know, he never passed that tax reform that hasn't been done since the Reagan era. He hasn't made peace with North Korea, something that no president has ever done before. He installed the travel ban to keep America safe from Islamic terrorists. He got us out of that disaster of a plan, the TPP, ended that horrible school lunch program that Michelle Obama installed, cut spending from various different government agencies that are basically useless, and got NATO to start chipping in and funding their own crap. So I would say his political achievements are not few, that they are more than most presidents before him have achieved in under just two years. Two years he's been president and he's achieved so much. The second thing I want to bring up is that his political prospects are shadowed and clouded by a chance of a democratic blue wave in the midterms. Yes, even more delusion coming from the left. They believe that somehow the American people are going to rise up against this tax reform that they have gotten to impeach this evil Hitler Trump and install some socialist Democrat like Bernie Sanders. That's not going to happen. A quote, blue wave is looking less and less likely day by day, month by month. And my last and final problem with this article, besides it's coming from the New York Times, is that they continuously called him Mr. Trump. It is President Trump, you disrespectful plebs at the New York Times. Now on to the news about the Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy retiring. Now, the liberal left and many Democrats are having a tissy fit over this because they believe that Trump is going to appoint some radical, far-right, literally Nazi to the Supreme Court and everything that the Democrats have fought for over the last 20 years is going to be abolished, like abortion, like gay rights, like marijuana legalization, and everything good that they have seen as progress. And I can tell them that they are again delusional. Because here is the truth, the hardcore truth, and I know many of you conservative listeners are not going to like it either. 
But Trump does not care about gay marriage. Trump does not care about abortion. Trump does not care if somebody gets an abortion or not. Trump doesn't care if somebody smokes weed. Trump doesn't care if there are gay people in the United States. And frankly, neither do I. And Trump, I think, is smart enough not to appoint a justice that is going to abolish the right to abortion, let alone stopping gay marriage and whatnot, which is, again, just absolutely lunacy. That's never going to happen. The left needs to get over themselves. I saw this CNN clip about Bernie Sanders, and he was talking about his thoughts on Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy leaving. And he was doing his usual democratic socialist bullcrap. But then Anderson Cooper asked him, well, what if President Trump elects this far right justice and he abolishes the right to abort? And Bernie Sanders unironically says there will be a revolution against the Trump presidency and the people will rise against this. And then he went on and brought up how abortion is like a right, like the freedom of speech or your right to bear guns. And here is my whole give and take on abortion, birth control, yada, yada, yada. First off, I, I just don't care about abortion. Second off, you know, I hear a lot of feminists complain, you know, birth control should be free along with abortions, basically funded by the taxpayers. But then these same feminists want to turn around and say that they don't want the government in their vagina or telling them what to do. Well, this is the issue. You ask the government to subsidize taxpayer money to fund your bullcrap and then not think the government is going to get involved in that process. Because like I talked about in my book, the government is the middleman between taxpayer money and whatever it is funding. So for instance, it would be the taxpayer, the government in the middle, and then abortions and free birth control. So the government would be the middleman in this. And to believe that the government is just not going to stick their hands in it to try to get some money out of it, then you're being delusional. And this is what these feminists and women activists and whatever you want to call them complain about. They want all this free birth control and abortions, yet they don't want government getting involved. Even though who else is going to fund your bullcrap if not the taxpayers? But that all being said, Trump is not going to pick a far-right extremist Supreme Court justice, and he's not going to appoint him. Trump is going to appoint a conservative, most likely, yes. Is he going to be a far-right, Nazi-loving bigot? No, he's not going to be that. Trump, if anything, is going to appoint a moderately conservative or conservative-leaning Supreme Court justice. So the liberals, if anything, are just blowing this up out of proportion and hoping that he picks someone on the far right so they can use that as an excuse to go out there and be violent because they have already been doing that kind of nonsense. So I could see sites like CNN, MSNBC, and ironically the New York Times calling for violence to Trump supporters and anybody on the right if Trump so happens to pick a moderate-leaning conservative because they're going to use the same excuses. Oh, he's going to go after abortion. He's going to go after gay rights. He's going to go after civil rights, women's rights, yada, yada, yada. They're going to pull every card out of the book to try to use this for their advantage because they believe that people, culture, and society are responsive to violence in a way that is going to have a favorable view from the left, being that they are only violent because the alternative is much, much worse coming from the right. Basically, they're violent because it's for the greater good. Though society and culture is not going to look at them that way, is not going to remember them that way. But the left will do what it thinks it has to do in order to get people on their side, which they believe is violence and suppressing the right. Whatever floats their boat, I guess. Either way, they're just making a big deal out of nothing. Trump is not going to appoint a far-right, extreme conservative to the Supreme Court. If anything, it's going to be a moderate, leaning conservative, if, if anything. But again, as always, just let the left shoot themselves in the foot and dig their own graves. But that all being said, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think is going to happen with the Supreme Court justice? Who do you think Trump's going to pick? And do you think that when Trump announces who it is, if may be a conservative, do you think the violence from the far left is going to increase due to this? Because I personally think it is. Because they will use this as an excuse 
to riot protest even more now. But like I said, you guys let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.